Speaking of pressure, uh, pressure is a, uh, is a physical property, uh, so you will deal with this in physics as well. It's defined by definition, pressure is force over area, okay? Uh, and uh, force is measured in newtons, uh, area is measured uh, in SI units in, in meters squared, and the SI unit for pressure is known as the Pascal, okay? after the scientist Pascal. Uh, newtons per meter squared, uh, or Pascal, uh, measures the force distribution uh, over some sort of an area. Okay, so I have here an example of, uh, well, uh, this woman's entire, entire uh, weight will be concentrated at this little tip. So if she steps on you with this tip, it will hurt a lot more than if she stepped on you with with this uh, with this end because her 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 weight will be distributed more uh, uh, if, uh, across this entire area. Whereas here, it's all concentrated at this uh, tiny little tip. Okay, so uh, it's it's a funny little thing here, but you know, an, an elephant has a, uh, a a larger area than than a heel would, a stiletto heel, and so the the pressure, I guess, will be lower here than will be here. So, and you feel that when you feel that on your body, if someone would step on you. Now, an elephant weighs a whole lot more than a, than a typical woman. So, uh, though it's low pressure, it's still pretty weighty and it would hurt a lot. But uh, just to explain to you, I mean, I guess the best way is to just compare uh, how this woman would, if she were to step on your foot, uh, you compare this, this pressure here to this pressure here, and you can see, you can understand what the force distribution would do to you and how you'd feel about that, okay? I could look at molecules just dancing at a dance party inside of this box, okay? And basically I can define the pressure uh, another way as well, um, how often do they hit the wall or container? So if I have like uh, someone, I don't know, some intern sit here and just count uh, the number of collisions that the balls uh, interact with the wall, uh, the number of collisions, the, ho the, la the, the, the higher the number, the, the more pressure that these things exert. Okay, so if you can imagine if I were to expand the size of this box, uh, it would not be very frequent for these circles to hit the wall, uh, and so the pressure would be lesser than if I were to uh, diminish the size of this box. Uh, at which point, at which point, the the, the these circles will hit the wall a whole lot more, meaning that they are uh, exerting more of a pressure uh, inside there. So. Uh, it's just another, it's a molecular explanation of pressure. This is a physical explanation of uh, pressure. So I'm presenting both of them. Uh, you know, so whichever one drives with you, go with it. Uh, so uh, one thing that you've, you've definitely heard before, uh, you hear that when uh, weather people on TV or uh, uh, pe people who study climatology discuss this, uh, and there's this thing called atmospheric pressure. And that is the pressure that is exerted by the atmosphere on, on us, okay? Uh, and basically, uh, from a biological point of view, we don't feel it. Okay? We, we evolved so that we don't feel the weight of the air. So basically, imagine that all of the air is this woman's leg, okay? Uh, and we live here. Uh, we don't feel this pressure of this woman's weight because we would just uh, we evolved not to feel that. Okay, but it doesn't mean it's not there. The entirety of the air that is above, uh, say, surf, you know, sea level here, uh, is still there and is still exerting some sort of pressure. So here's another, another nice little picture here uh, of a column of of air exerting some sort of a pressure on I don't know Wyoming whatever this is so uh this this entirety of the atmosphere all of this column of air above the person who is residing in this particular place uh they will feel all of this above their heads okay if they go all the way to the top of this air tower right at the top where I guess outer space begins we will say that there is no pressure here the pressure here is zero at sea level right here, the pressure is the atmospheric pressure, and we have defined it uh, as one atmosphere, okay, atmosphere being a unit of pressure, one atmosphere. Uh, it is also in SI units, 14.7 pounds per square inch, PSI. 
Uh, it is also uh, in the units of Pascal, which is, which is the, this is the SI units, 101,325 Pascals, uh, which is 760 millimeters of mercury, or AKA Tor, okay? Uh, named after the scientist Torricelli. Uh, millimeters of mercury sounds a little random, doesn't it? Uh, well, here's an explanation of that. This is a barometer, okay? Uh, this here is the barometer, bar, meaning pressure. It is measuring the pressure. And so imagine I have a vat of mercury, and this was done by the scientist uh, Torricelli uh, a few hundred years ago. Uh, and so, so he had uh, a mercury bath here, and he put, he submerged into it uh, a, a tube, and he evacuated the air here, because there's nothing here. So imagine at first, it, it, this entire thing is empty. This, this tube is empty, there's no blue here, okay? And you put it in. And so what happens from a, from a point of view of physics, the pressure, the, the, the column of air that is above that bath is exerting, uh, is exerting some sort of pressure onto the surface of this liquid, okay? Uh, and it just worked out so well that if you do it with mercury, it would rise uh, 760 millimeters. Exactly. And so he, uh, that's how he measured it. And so you can correlate, basically, the height of, um, of a liquid rising in a column uh, and uh, equate that to pressure. Uh, so... Uh, this height here varies with that with pressure. So if I were to take this barometer and I were to put this at the top of this air column, I would see nothing. It would not rise at all because I have the, the air is not is not pushing down on this surface of this mercury. So that wouldn't happen. All right. Another uh, sort of nifty device is the manometer. The manometer, uh, instead of measuring the atmospheric pressure, it measures the pressure of a random gas. Okay, so I have the atmosphere here exerting a pressure onto this tube. I have mercury here in this dark gray. And the other side here is a flask attached, uh, imagine like a big bulb here uh, where a gas hangs out. Uh, and so the idea is, well, I want to know what the pressure of this gas that's in this flask. Okay, so if the atmospheric pressure uh, is larger uh, than than oops sorry than the pressure of this gas. Okay, that means it will push the liquid more than the gas will. Okay, this is this is A. In B, the gas pushes the liquid more than the atmosphere does. Atmosphere does. So meaning the gas has more of a pressure than the atmosphere. Okay. So if I were to give you a problem, and I'll go over one in a second, where uh, the atmosphere pushes more than, than the gas, then I will see a rise on this side, on the gas's side, okay? And to find the pressure of this gas, I will say, well, it's 760 minus whatever this difference in height is. So I could put this, I could put a ruler here, and I can measure this height. So here it's 118. So someone were to measure this thing and said, okay, between here and here, this thing rose 118. Okay. In the absence of everything, it will just be level, as you would know, as you know, right? So because it, because of this, since the pressure of the atmosphere is larger than the pressure of this gas, the pressure of the gas should be lower than 760. So that makes sense. It would be 760 minus 118 would be 642 millimeters of mercury. Okay. And I can use this conversion factor here to go from millimeters of mercury to PSI or to atmosphere, whatever I want. Okay, and I'll, I'll go over that, don't worry. Uh, so uh, in this example in part B, the gas exerts more of a pressure than the atmosphere does, so it just stands to reason that the pressure of this gas be higher than 760. Okay, so uh, it's just, I mean, just, just in, from an intuitive point of view, uh, you, should, you should figure out whether you subtract from 760 or add to 760. So here you want to add to 760, here you want to subtract from 760 because here it should be lower, here it should be higher. So if I were to measure again the height difference from here to here, it would be 215. And if I were to add 215 to 760, this would be the pressure of this gas. And again, I can convert 
to whatever other unit I want. Uh, and so let's go over uh, an example here uh, together. Uh, uh, so uh, I just want to go over here. Oops, right here. There you go. So I have I have prepared a little uh, thing here. I have the atmosphere exerting a pressure on this manometer. I have methane here. Methane is exerting a pressure on the other side of the manometer. And you can see uh, right here that uh, the atmosphere exerts more of a pressure than the methane does. So methane should have a pressure that is less than the pressure of the atmosphere. So it should be less than 760. So P of CH4 should be less than 760. So I should subtract this height difference. So it's 760 millimeters of mercury minus 20 millimeters of mercury. And my answer should be 740 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Now, if someone were to ask you, convert this. So I'm just coming up with this on the fly. Convert to atmosphere. Okay. So uh, from the uh, from this thing here, I'll go back to that here. I see here 760 tor, which is 760 millimeters of mercury. It's the same unit. Uh, this thing is equal to one atm. Okay, so that will be my conversion factor for my my dimensional analysis. I want to put the atm at the top and 760 millimeters of mercury at the bottom, so it cancels out. So, so, uh, so 740 millimeters of mercury times. Uh, 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 1 atm. Uh, and if I were to plug this into a calculator, which I didn't pre-do, there you go, it would be 740 over 760. Uh, and this thing would be 0.974 atm. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Okay, so you can convert them and you can use this sort of dimension analysis to con interconvert between any of these. So I can go to Pascal's if I wanted to, uh, or I can go to uh, PSI, and there's other units of pressure as well. Uh, if, if you're uh, so inclined, you can look them up. Uh, and you'll, you'll see them, you'll definitely see them. So let's look at this next example of another manometer. In this example, it's the opposite. The atmosphere exerts less of a pressure than this gas Z. Z exerts more of a pressure. And I want this in PSI. Okay, so it will, it will force us to do this conversion yet again. So um, now uh, it stands to reason. So we'll, we'll, start, we'll start doing this in millimeters of mercury because we have anything in millimeters of mercury. Uh, it stands to reason uh, that uh, this should have higher than 760 because it is exerting more of a pressure. So the pressure of gas Z should be 760, which is the atmospheric pressure, plus this height difference, which is 15. Uh, and then this should be 775 millimeters of mercury. I want to convert this pressure to PSI. And uh, I'm just going to go with 14.7 PSI is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So in order for me to do this, I need to, to use this as a dimensional analysis tool to figure this out. I want PSI, so that will be at the top. And so 775 millimeters of mercury multiplied by the dimensional analysis factor. I want to cancel millimeters of mercury, so I'll go to the bottom with it. And I want to get PSI, so I'll go to the top. Uh, this thing is 760, this thing is 14.7, uh, and again, I didn't pre-do this, but it's not a big deal. Just type into the calculator, 775 times 14.7 divided by 760, uh, and you'd get that this is 14.99, uh, we need three sick figs, so this would be 15.0 PSI.
Okay, so it's higher than the 14.7 that I uh, that is the atmospheric pressure. So that there you go. So that's how you would do that. Okay. So that goes over the manometer. All right. Now gas laws. This is uh, a new uh, another topic we'll go over in a few minutes.